So uh, when you're dealing with exponential functions, the generic form of the equation is going to be the following. Now, there's a bunch of different rules about this. So, again, the fact that you can use your notes in on quizzes and tests, I definitely encourage you to take notes on these rules. Um, but the several rules that exist here, all the same transformation rules apply to exponential functions that apply to the previous ones. Okay. Now, there's a couple other things, and that is um, if A is a positive number, and b is some number greater than 1, then this function y equals a b to the x is called a growth function. Okay, and so this is what I think all of the functions in this first section okay, are going to be this exponential growth function. Okay, and here's the general form for that. Okay, the general equation <coughs> is going to look like this. Okay, as your x's get smaller and smaller, your value decreases, but it never gets below zero. As your x's get larger and larger, the value increases, and you guys have probably all heard it increases exponentially means that the more you go out, the steeper the steeper the increase is. Okay, and so that's what exponential growth is. This is the generic model for a times b to the x, okay, where the power of x only applies to the base b. Okay, and so this, this value, as, as x gets lower and lower and lower, it's never actually going to uh, get below zero. It never becomes a negative number, assuming it's not negative to start with. Um, and so what it does is it approaches something called an asymptote. Have you guys heard of that term before? No? An asymptote. Okay, so here's the word or here's the word. And an asymptote is just a line on a graph or a line on a set of coordinates that a graph approaches but never <coughs> it never actually reaches it. Okay, so when you're looking at this uh, for your generic exponential growth uh, graph the horizontal asymptote. Now again, asymptotes can be horizontal or vertical. So in this case, it's horizontal. So I'll often abbreviate it HA for horizontal asymptote. But in this particular case, the horizontal asymptote is at y equals zero. A and what that means or the way that it's going to be expressed in this um, is to kind of identify that um, as x approaches negative infinity. So notice as x gets further and further to the left of the origin, okay, what does y approach? Zero, right? It never actually reaches it, okay, but it approaches zero. So this is the way that it's described. So this horizontal asymptote tells you as x gets closer and closer to negative infinity, y is getting closer and closer to zero. It's never going to reach it. It's never going to cross it and get below it. Okay, but that's just the, the form that you have for this particular graph. Okay. Now, all of, the different, um, all of the different rules for transformations apply to this model. So we're going to talk, we'll talk about those or look at a couple of those here really quickly. Okay, so if we go back to uh, transformations. Okay, so okay, when we take, or actually I think I used H for this. 
What does this H do to our graph? If we add something to our function on the in the inside of our function, Jinx. Shifts. Now, careful, remember, it's whatever value of x would give you a 0 in there is the shift. So if we had uh, x plus 2, what value of x would give, give you a 0 inside? Well, not down, but to the left. Okay, so it's a horizontal shift to the left, h units. Okay, so what would f of x minus h do? Shifts it to the right, h units. Okay, what does f of x plus k do? Okay, now when the when the transformation occurs outside of the function, it's going to move it vertically up or down. So the plus k is going to move it up k units. And if we took f of x minus k, that's going to shift it. down k units. Okay, we also talked about uh, negative f of x. Does anybody recall what's going to happen here? Now it's a reflection. And it's going to be reflected across the what? So now remember, f of x itself is a y value. So we're going to take the opposite of what was normally the y. So if you, take, if you take a set of coordinates and you take the opposite of the y, all that's going to do is reflect it across that x-axis, right? And now if you, instead of changing the corresponding y to a different sign, if you change the corresponding x to a different sign, but keep the y the same, what kind of reflection occurs here? Now it's going to reflect across that y-axis. And then finally, the value that's out in front of your function, the, the a value. So if your a is a value that is greater than 1, what transformation occurs to your graph. And, and again, in here we're looking at absolute value of A because the negative sign is the one that actually uh, adjusts the reflection. But if you're looking at something where it's three times or four times or 20 times, is it getting steeper or is it getting flatter or shallower? What, is it gonna stretch it or shrink it? Stretches. And so this is going to stretch the graph. Okay, which means the graph is going to get a bit steeper. And if the absolute value of A is a fraction that's less than 1, then it's going to shrink the graph. And it becomes flatter. Okay, so those are all the transformations. And these same transformations apply to... Uh, our basic exponential graphs too. And so you guys are welcome to use your calculators to just type it in, but oftentimes I'm just going to ask for the generic shifting that occurs uh, in all of these. Okay. So just again to give you a little bit of time to write this down if you haven't completely finished it, and just to review here. So shifting inside our function is a horizontal shift. Shifting on the outside of our function is the vertical shift. Okay, negatives on the inside and or outside are reflections. And then depending on whether your coefficient is greater than 1 or a fraction between 0 and 1, again, disregarding the sign of it, that is um, going to either shrink it or stretch it. And so those are all the different little transformations that can occur. And so let's take a look at um, maybe some uh, instances of exponential graphs and what they would look like. All 
right, so if we take a look at this function here, and we want to see what's happening to it. Okay, so again, I'm, I'm going to use dashed lines for a couple things. Here, my first dashed line is just my our reference graph. So this is the y equals um, a times b to the x, just the, the generic exponential uh, growth function. Okay, but then the graph also includes or will also include a horizontal asymptote, which you'll often designate with a, dashed, a straight dashed line or a dashed line for that. Okay, so let's see what happens here with our pieces. Okay. Right, in our generic graph, the, the point zero, 01 is the key point. Okay, so for a lot of our graphs, um, the origin or this point are pretty key, or the point 1, 1, which is key in a lot of the different uh, functions that we have. Okay, but this is the point that we're going to use to move around. Okay, so the first thing is, uh, do we have any reflections? Any shifting? We have one shift. The shift is inside our function here. It's, a, it's applying to the, F, or to the x itself. So is that going to shift us to the right or to the left? It goes left one. So we move this piece one over. And then the only other thing that we have in here is this multiplier of 2. So is that going to stretch it or shrink it? Stretch it. So we're going to have, instead of this kind of flat graph, we're going to get steeper faster. Okay. And then this one, since there's no horizontal shifting, our asymptote remains the same. Since there, I'm sorry, since there's no vertical shifting, this asymptote remains the same. So this y equals 0 is the horizontal asymptote. 